Hello and welcome to Model Train Fun. My name is Bo Jensen and today we're going to talk about how can I turn the signal red after the train passes using the timer functionality on the central station tree. So the idea is I got a train like this one here. It's uh, waiting for a green signal and um, whenever it gets green signal the train will actually move forward and then as the uh, train passes the uh, signal will turn red again, such that a following train on the same line will not be able to pass. So um, remember, uh, this, is, um, this is actually a continuation of the Central Station uh, 3 Episode 8, where I talked about manual routes and where we talked about it's annoying, you have to, uh, to uh, press red again after the train has passed. Um, of course, what you could do is you could uh, choose to put in uh, S88s uh, or train detection all over the place. Uh, and then uh, whenever the train either leaves the track or approaches something after, it would turn the signal red. However, I thought I would try and to do something simpler. Uh, this is a simple layout I got here. It's a temporary layout. I don't want to pull a lot of wires. So how could I do it without that? And as it turned out, the simple answer is use the timer in the central station tree. Enjoy the video. So the idea is that we can uh, change the signal uh, automatically when the train passed. And we are going to base this on a timer. So you can see here's the train in front of the uh, entrance, so the east entrance to my train station. So uh, I will just uh, um, select the route. It will turn green and we can go through the signal. And then you can see the signal will automatically turn green when uh, the uh, train passes. And here we have another example where the uh, freight train is in front of the west entrance to the uh, to the train station. I wanted to go through on uh, main track two here uh, through the train station. Uh, when it does that, I want both signals here to turn green. So this one here at the entrance from the west and then for the exit to the uh, east. So uh, let's try it out. We hit this one here. It turns green and we can drive through the train station as the train passes it goes in red uh, the train then continues and when it passes the uh, other signal that one turns uh, red as well so uh, this is an example of how we want to have the signals uh, uh, turn using the timer. So how do we make that happen? Well, um, let's try it out. We go into events, uh, we edit our events so we can see what we have. I'm gonna look at this one here, uh, main one, exit to branch. All right, if we uh, look at this one here, you can see it uh, does the entire route, then it turns the signal green, and then it turns it red again. So uh, one thing we could do is just put a pause in here between to make sure that uh, you as an operator gets the chance to uh, start the train and actually get it rolling and it uh, comes a certain distance uh, past it. Uh, so we put in a delay. How do we do that? Well, a delay, you can see here, I put it here on after it took screen, there's a delay of eight seconds. So in here, in the settings, in a event element, if you put a delay in, it first executes the action and then it delays. So in this case, you will see it turns green, it waits eight seconds, and then it turns red. All right, let's try that out. So um, we hit start here and you can see it runs. You can see it turned green down here, the signal, and then it will actually wait eight seconds, and then it turns red. That is exactly what we wanted. However, there was an unintended side effect. Remember uh, down here on the route uh, on the um, 
control desk. When it is, the route is valid and, and you can actually use it. It turns green. Now look at this one down here. What happens when I, when I run it? Now let me just close all of this and I'll move it a little up. So what happens when I run this one here? You see, it turns yellow. Now it turns black. What does black mean? I would like it to be green. Black actually means that the event is still running, and then you can see it. And and now it uh, turned blank again. So at no point in time, I kind of get the visual indication that it's green, so I can run. So how do I do that? So how do we change the behavior such that uh, we get the green dot uh, when we want to? Um, let's look at uh, this one over here, main one exit to the west. So that's the one going out this way here. Uh, let's look at this signal here for S304. If we go into events, I'm going to edit events again. Um, I'm just going to move this a little down so we can see it here. And then I want to look at uh, M1 exits to the west. So that's the one I have here. If you look at this one here, I haven't done anything here at the end of the when event with turning the uh, signal at 304 red again. It's just a standard one. It goes into green and I didn't put any delay in. All right. So the entire trick here is um, I want to do it such that whenever this signal turns green, I want to start another event and then I want that event to wait for eight seconds and then turn the signal back to red. Now, in order to do that, you have to turn on extended events. How do you do that? Well, you go up here in the uh, top bar. Remember, if it's closed, you can uh, pull down in the green M here. You hit system. When you're inside here, the settings, you can hit system again. If you pop up on a page uh, like this here, it could be you're down on the USB. You can go back. And then you can go into system here. Uh, we uh, choose the uh, CS3 one here, and it's already chosen for us. And then we go down. And there, here under track protocols and operations, we open that one. And then there's events extended mode. It uh, warns us that uh, it'll become more complex. We are happy with that. OK. And now you can see it's turned on. So you need to turn this on in order to have events that reacts to the state of a signal. All right. So let's go back to our events here. And now we want to add a new event. Okay. I'm going to call this event. Let me just move that up here. S304 to red. And this I want to happen automatically. All right, so now we got that here. What do we do? Well, the uh, thing we want to do actually is to make this event trigger when the event turns green. Um, so first I take my signal down here is 304. I turn it green and then I drag it up here where it says manual mode because it's the trigger. Oh, see, it cheated me and actually changed it to red. Now, the challenge with that is if it's red, you can see over here, I cannot change it back to green again. All right, so let's try one more time. I turn it green and then I drag it up and now it's green. So you need to turn it green first and then drag it up. So this is the trigger, right? So this actually means whenever the green or S304 signal turns green, it will trigger this event. Now, what do we want this event to do? Well, actually, what I want it to do is to turn red. I drag my signal up again, and I, this time I can go and actually change the position, and I want to turn it red. However, I want to turn it red after eight seconds, and there's nowhere I can set in the delay. Why is that? Because if I set in the delay here, it actually uh, this delay is after this action happens, right? So this is when it turns red, then I want to wait. I don't want that. Uh, I go in here, there's no delay either. So what do I do? Well, I do a little trick here. 
I actually make something that doesn't do anything for me. So I here add an element, so I hit the plus, I hit the text, I just let it say station name, I put in a delay here of 8 seconds, okay, and now you can see it's after uh, the signal turns red, how is it I move it, well I select it, oh sorry, I long press on it so it turns light blue, and then I can actually take it and move it forward. So now I got an event, it's triggered when the S304 turns green. There's something here, honestly I don't know what this text does, I've never seen it do anything, but it waits for me 8 seconds and then it turns it green. Oh sorry, then it turns it red. Now let's try it out. So I go out of edit mode, remember it's important to go out of edit mode. I turn it uh, red here, and now you can see if I just trigger this one here, it turns green, and then after 8 seconds, it will automatically uh, turn red. So let's hope that happens. Yes, and indeed it did. Uh, so that happens anytime something turns it green, then it will go back to red. Hence, if I click this one here, and notice now I get the correct green in my routing indicator here, I can drive out, it's green, it waits 8 seconds, and now it turns red, so this is exactly what, what we wanted. Woohoo! So making an event for the uh, S304, so the signal 304, to turn back wasn't too bad. Why is that? Because it's actually a two-state signal. When you click on it, it can turn green, and it can only turn uh, to that state there. However, what if I go look at the other signal I have over here? That's uh, signal uh, 320, so 320. If I click on this one, it actually has multiple states. So that means I need to make an event for each of the other possible states it can run into. By the way, why do I have that here? Well, the reason I have that here is if I turn it green, then I want it to, uh, that's when I'm going into uh, the uh, mainline tree where there's a higher speed going through the station because it's kind of on the outside. Um, if I turn it to uh, yellow, that's when I would uh, I would do that when I go to a main two, which is kind of in the middle of the station where I want the trains to go with reduced speed. So in order to uh, handle the uh, signal 320, what do I do? Well, I basically just go in, let me just go in edit mode, and let me see signal. I create two different uh, events. So here I got uh, the... Uh, the one, if signal 320 turns green, then I wait 8 seconds, and then I turn it red. So this is a, a signal a 320 green to red automatically, and then I make one when it turns yellow, or the green yellow, and I wait 8 seconds, and then I turn it red. So basically I create uh, two events for it. I could create the third one because this is actually a four-state signal, however I'm not using the fourth uh, shunting state in this case. Now uh, let's look at the example we had with the two uh, signals. So I had the freight train out here before the entrance to the west. I want to be able to activate this uh, route over here, the uh, mainline 2 uh, transit uh, from the west. Uh, if we go in and look at that one here, uh, transit from the west, where do we have that? We have that here. So basically, it uh, first sets the route here for the entry. It opens the, oh, sorry, it sets the route for the exit. It opens the exit of the station, then it uh, sets the route or the turnout uh, to enter the, um, the uh, station, and then it gives us a yellow. And the yellow was because I want to go with reduce speed in here, right? So now the challenge is I need to set this one, and after it turns green, uh, I want to wait 8 seconds. However, the other signal you see over here, um, which is a form signal, not a light signal, that's why you have this little thingy sticking out. This one here, I don't want to turn red after 8 seconds, because the train over here, when this signal turns green, has to manage to get past this signal, go over here and get past this signal uh, before it actually exits. So, 
I wanted to wait a lot longer. And I've tried a couple of times with the speed I like to go through here uh, as reduced speed. And then it turns out I want 20 seconds here before this one turns red. However, what if I use the uh, route in here? So the uh, exit to the east from uh, mainline 2. In that case, the train is already in here. And I just want this, uh, when this signal turns uh, green, I actually want it to turn red again after 8 seconds. So now I get the challenge that this signal uh, will have to turn red after 8 seconds if I use uh, one of the exit routes here. However, if I use the, the transit or the through route here, it has to wait 20 seconds. So that means I can't just make one um, uh, event that would actually uh, um, turn this one red. So how do I do that? Well, I use another trick I also could have used before. So if we go in and look at the uh, mainline 2, um, actually entry from the east is not the one I want to look at. I, that was incorrect before. I want to look at the mainline 2 exit uh, to the east, right? Because that's the one going out. This one is the one coming in. Okay, so I look at this one. M2 exit to the east. How does that actually look? M2, exit to the east. Okay, so here I do another trick. And you, I could have done that before. So you can either choose to set up an event on the signal. So when it turns green, it turns red. You could also control it in each event. So what I'm doing here is, you see, I uh, set the uh, turnouts uh, going for um, the train to be able to leave. I set it to green. And then I have an extra event here. And what is important with this event here, see if I click on it, there's no delay. There's no delay ticked here. Okay, see if I tick this delay here, it says W. That means the entire event will wait till this one has uh, finished. Okay, I don't want that. So untick this one to make sure it doesn't say W. Uh, because when it does that, it fires off the other event, and then it just finishes here. And when it finishes, that's when you get the little green dot inside the box as we would like. So this is another way of doing it. Just fire this off. Okay, now let's go and see uh, what does this one do. Remember here, you can, oh, sorry, you can long press this one, and then it will actually show it underneath. So the only thing it does is, well, I'm using the text station name uh, uh, trick again. It does a delay of 8 seconds, and then it turns the signal red. And here you see the S301 uh, turning red. Okay. Let's try and look at the transit. Uh, so if I go through the transit here, that's the one I had before. Here again, at the end, I have it. And notice there's no W. Okay. Oh. I keep uh, forgetting to long press here. When you long press, you can see again, um, there's another event, and it waits 20 seconds, right? So I basically made uh, two events, the S301 to red after 20 seconds, and S301 to red after 20 seconds. Um, now, just uh, to make sure you remember, if I remove this one here, element here, how do I get it back? Well, basically what you do is you drag and drop. So I go over here, I find my S301, where do we have it? So here's S301 to red after 8 seconds, and that's not the one I wanted. I want the S301 to red after 20 seconds. So you can basically drag and drop this in, and then it comes into the event. Make sure there's no W, and now you actually got what you want. So now let's uh, try and execute the event. We remember to go out of edit mode for events. Um, I'm going to move this up. Oops. I'm going to move this one up and see uh, and move this a little down so we can see everything. So remember, this is the M2 uh, transit um, uh, from the west. So I basically want this signal to turn green. And after 20 signal, that to turn green. Okay, we start the event. 
we see it sets the turnout, it turns uh, S301 green, it sets the other turnouts, and then it actually turns uh, uh, the S320 to uh, yellow, and you can see now it's actually executing this, but you see the first one has actually stopped, and you see it's actually waiting the 20 seconds here for it to uh, actually turn the signal red, and it did that there, so that is exactly what we wanted. Yippee! All right, that was some uh, event programming here in order to make the uh, signals uh, turn red automatically. Um, and the only thing we did was uh, use the timer function. By the way, if anybody can tell me if, if that uh, text uh, element, event element I put in there has a side effect, please uh, let me know. But I haven't figured out if it has a side effect uh, uh, at all. If the text doesn't uh, work, try and put something else in that you would naturally do. Um, so we uh, basically did it in two different ways. <clears throat> the, um, the first way we did it was whenever the signal uh, we have over here, for example, turns green, then uh, we have an event that gets triggered on the uh, signal turning green. It uh, waits eight seconds and then turn it red. And do remember if it's a signal that has um, multiple aspects, then you need to set it for each aspect. The other way we could do it, um, which was also necessary for us because some signals had to wait long, longer in some situations than others. The other way to do it is to make a dedicated uh, event, a manual event that basically just waits the eight seconds and then turns in red. And you would trigger that at the end of the uh, route setting event, so that it basically triggers that. And remember that you can add a W when you trigger another route. In this case, you do not want that uh, W there. So make sure to untick that little box. Um, to me, uh, this is a great way uh, for, for you to, uh, to implement this. If you got a simple layout, uh, you don't wanna pull a lot of wires for the uh, S88, if you want to pull a lot of wires for the S88, it may be a better option because it's easier to program. However, it can also be a good exercise for you to try out and make these events because you get into some a little more advanced uh, event programming that is actually uh, fun to do and you can use for lots of other things as well. So I really hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit the little notification bell. Um, do uh, remember to subscribe so that uh, we will see each other again in the future. Enjoy!